Welcome everyone to another stream. Actually, this is not a stream. I'm so used to saying stream because I do streams, but just welcome to another video in the series of Leak Code Explorer where we go over Leak Code Explorer cards. We're going to be continuing on with the Leak Code Explorer, the Leak Code Beginner's Guide card. And we're actually going to be doing our last challenge problem today, and then we'll close off with my own thoughts of these last two sections right here. So ransom note, a also fantastic question, which let me move this over here because the solution's already there, but I want to bring this back here so we can think about this. Okay, so given two strings, ransom note and magazine, return true if ransom note can be constructed by using the letters from magazine and false otherwise. Each letter in magazine can only be used once in ransom note. So. We're given both of these strings, right? Ransom note and magazine. We want to return true if the ransom note can be constructed by using the letters from magazine. So it means that if we count the frequency of all the different characters inside of magazine, after we do this, is there a way that I can go through my ransom note and look at each one of these different characters that we've counted from magazine and be able to use them to construct the ransom note? If that's not the case, then we'll just return false, else we can return true. This is a very classic question where you get the frequency of something and then you go over something else and using that frequency that you just acquired, you can make a decision. And one of the best data structures to do this, I really think, you know, in some of these videos, I might show you two ways of doing something, but I think it's the best for me just to go ahead and show you the best way of doing something. And there's also an interesting thing that I want to talk about. So one of the things we need to do is I want to first take the frequency of all the different characters inside of magazine. There's two ways that we can do this. If you're coming from JavaScript land, and actually maybe this is a good thing to go over twice before we even look at the constraints, how might you start taking the frequency of this? You might imagine that we can create an object literal and inside that object literal, we have keys that represent characters and values that represent the frequencies of each one of those different characters. So we can do something like const frequency is equal to an object literal. And then we can say for const C of magazine, I'm using C here to denote character for const character of magazine, every single character in magazine, what do we wanna do? There's actually kind of a cool shorthand that we can apply here. And I'm actually going to even make this on one line and check this out and I'll explain it to you in a second. We can say the frequency of C equals the frequency of C plus one or one. Okay, so what is happening here? Right. The first time we get to frequency, let's say we're looking at, let's say magazine is just a right. Our object literal currently is empty. We're going to say frequency of C. So the frequency of a is equal to frequency of a right frequency of a currently is what it's nothing, right? It's undefined. So what happens when we do undefined plus one? Let's go ahead and find out for ourselves. We'll do undefined plus one. That's not a number. Now, in the case of this or expression, not a number is a falsy value. So because it is a falsy value, we're going to take the right hand of this expression and we're going to set that as the initial value. So we end up with something that looks like this a one. Actually, really, it's something that looks like this a one. Now, imagine we had two A's. What happens now when we get to the second day? We're going to say, OK, what's frequency of C? The frequency of C is one because we already have that character in here. So to that, we can just add a one and now we'll get two. So this makes it so if the value exists, we'll increment the frequency else we'll initialize it to one. This is actually a, a clever shorthand I discovered a long time ago, I think even on leak code, believe it or not, maybe somewhere else I don't remember. And it's a nice thing that we can do. Now before we move forward, let's think about something. A lot of these questions have the constraints section down here. And I think it's important that even early on in your leak code journey, you focus on these constraints and you think about them, you critically think about them. There's a very important constraint here that comes across in many questions. So ransom note in magazine consists of lowercase English letters. What does this mean? It means that we're only dealing with lowercase letters of the English alphabet of which there are 26 different characters, right? So that means that we can actually optimize this data structure here. Let's think about what happens internally when our code is being compiled, it's being parsed and all these wonderful things that are happening underneath the hood, right? In terms of code compilation, think about how it thinks of this object literal. It doesn't know ahead of time. Like you might think, let's say magazine is like A, A and B. 
if I asked you, what's the space complexity of this? Well, you might say, well, the, the, the largest that my object literal will grow here, because I have two A's and one B, is essentially just going to be the size of all the unique characters. Like if I have three A's, two B's, and one C, this object literal will grow to have three keys, right? An A, a B, and a C, each with values that represent their frequency. So you might say, well, the space complexity here is maybe like all the unique characters inside of magazine. But we as humans know that, but the, the language, and, and perhaps there is a way for it to know ahead of time, I'm, sh I'm sure there might be, that, you know, the, the, the compilers are very intelligent and, and they can figure these things out for us, but there isn't really a way for us to know ahead of time how large this thing might get. It can't optimize for that under the hood. So it's going to take some hits to performance, right? Because it just doesn't know how large frequency will ever get. We as humans know that it's constrained by the size of the alphabet, but the program doesn't know that. Remember that the program, the code is stupid, right? You may have heard this expression before, that the programs are dumb. They only know exactly what you tell them. They don't do anything more or anything less. They only do exactly as they're told. So because of that, we can actually optimize this, right? Check out what we can do. We can set frequency equal to a new array of size 26, and we can fill this up with zero. Okay, what have we said now? We want to keep count of all the different lowercase letters that appear in magazine, of which there are only going to be 26. So we create a new array of size 26 where we can keep the frequency of each one of these different ones. Now you might be asking yourself, well, how, how do I keep track of the key and the value? The object literal made it very easy for me to say, well, A has a frequency of one, B has a frequency of two, so on and so forth. Well, we're gonna use something right here, and this is what we'll do. We need to first now get the index of the character we're looking at, right? An A, we need we need to make an A fit in slot zero, a B fit in slot one, a C fit in slot two. I call this process like normalizing it. And there's a way that we can do this. And I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. We're gonna get the index is going to be equal to C dot car code at zero minus 97. So a lot of things that are happening here, right? Let's, let's dissect this line by line. The C here is just the character. So this is really just A or B or maybe another A or a C, so on and so forth, right? Now, let's put this back to C. And what does car code at do? Let's look that up. Car code at. String prototype car code at. Returns an integer between 0 and 65535 representing the UTF-16 code unit at the given index, right? So this is going to give us this number, but if we think about it, right, lowercase letters, let's think about where they're, like what's the range of these lowercase letters? If you're if at all familiar with ASCII, if we look up an ASCII table, we look up some images here of the ASCII table, right? Maybe this one, is this one gonna be all right? Hopefully it's decent. Okay, hopefully this is not too small. There you go. Let's look at where the letter A fits. The A is here, the character A is the decimal value 97. But our frequency array is only of size 26. So if I want to make A fit inside of my array and I want to put it in position zero, I can subtract 97. Similarly, for all other lowercase digits, I can always subtract 97. If I subtract 97 from 122, then we'll get 25. So that Z will fit in the last position of our array. So now we have a way to put these different characters inside of our frequency array. And since I've already filled it up with zero, what I can now do is I can say the frequency at that index plus or equals one. So what do we have now? Now we have an array of size 26, where every single index, index zero represents A, index one represents B, two represents C, so on and so forth. Each one of these indices represents the frequency of that character, right? And why is this better? Now, if you remember your arrays, back in like data structure land, arrays are contiguous blocks of memory. It's very easy now for the compiler and the engine to know, well, I have this contiguous block of memory, I can optimize this, and I know that it will always be of size 26. It's constant. We can now make optimizations because of this. It doesn't matter my inputs, this will always stay the same. Whereas with an object literal, it doesn't know how big that can get. So it's going to take a little bit of a performance hit because as we're going through the program, it might have to make some more decisions under the hood. So I hope that clears up 
why we're using this fixed size array versus an object literal. And I want you to pay very close attention to this constraint because it comes up in many, many questions. If you see something like consists of only lowercase English letters, it's a very good indicator that you might be able to use something like this and make your algorithm perform a lot faster. And it's also a very good clarifying question to ask during an interview. You might be able to ask, are we only considering lowercase English letters? And if they say yes, then you can explain why you want to use this instead of something like a dictionary or an object literal. So let's go ahead and move forward. Now we have a frequency of all the different characters in magazine. So what is that we want to do? Now we want to go through our ransom note. And for each one of these letters, we want to see, okay, I need an A. Do I have an A for magazine? Yes, we do have an A for magazine. Now I need another A. Do I have another A for magazine? I do have another A for magazine. Right? And then that's it. We've already finished picking out all the characters from ransom note and we have them available in magazine. So that's good for us. So we're going to do the same thing here for const C of ransom note. Oh, having an issue typing today. We're still going to copy this because now we still need to index inside of our frequency, right? What is it that we're going to do? We want to see if, right? Well, let's, let's just imagine we said frequency of index minus equal one. What does this line right here mean in this case? It means that we have looked inside of index and we have used one of our characters that we found in magazine, right? We're we're using a character from ransom note and we're saying, okay, we want to use this character to construct the ransom note. We can move forward, but we can only use one if the current frequency is greater than zero, right? Because if it's already zero, we can't use nothing. And that's when we know that it will return false, right? So if we say if frequency of index is less than or equal to zero, then we return false else we can just return true, right? Because this means right here, let's see where we get a false, right? Here we have a ransom note of AA and we have a magazine of AB, right? So we go to A, magazine has one A. So we say if frequency of index, which is one less than or equal to zero, no. So we decrease the frequency of A. But now when I get to the next day, I check the frequency again and it is zero. So we return false. And then finally, once this is done, we can return true. So let's go ahead and run our test cases against this and let's see what we get. We get false, false, true, false, false, true. And before we move on, I actually want to explore a nice little optimization that we can make here. What is it that we're really doing? We want to first check, can I, can I actually use something in here? If so, then I'll continue, else will be false. So what we can do is we can say, if frequency index minus minus is less than or equal to zero, return false. And what is this doing, right? This is called a postfix operator. What it does is it's first checking to see what we have. And then, well, rather, it's first doing the conditional expression check with this, comparing it against less than or equal to zero. If that's true, it'll then do the decrement of the frequency at that index. So let's see if this works, right? We have AA magazine, magazine AB. So we have one A, we have one B, we get to ransom note. We say, okay, const of index. So we get where the A is. We say, is one less than or equal to zero? That's fine, so we can continue. And then we decrement, now we're at zero. We say, is zero less than or equal to zero? Yes, it is, so we return false. So we check if it's available, and then we can decrement it because we've just used it. So let's go ahead and run that again against our different test cases. We get false, false, true, false, false, true. Now let's go ahead and submit this, and let's see what we end up with. All right, so 53.18. Okay, so fantastic question. I really think it's worth it for you to really understand this question because this sort of pattern appears in so many of these leak code style questions where you're taking the frequency of something, you know, you're loading up that frequency array and then you're checking it against some other input and making your decision based on that. Let's think about time complexity, right? What is the time of this? Well, we're going to have to iterate through magazine and ransom note. So really that's going to be an O of M for magazine and an O of R for ransom note. So it's O of M plus R because we're having to loop through both of these, which can both be of different size. If they were both guaranteed to be the same size, then we can just say O of N because that would be O of M plus O of N, which is O of 2N, which just becomes O of N. But because these are each two different sizes, it becomes O of M plus R. 
And the space complexity, what we learned is it's now constant, right? We're only ever going to use an array of size 26, which really is just O of one, because it doesn't matter the size of our inputs, this will always stay the same. So now we have a O of M plus R complex in time and O of one or O of 26 for space. So fantastic question. I really, really like this question and I hope you all can gain something out of this video and at least use it to you know your advantage the next time you're practicing or coming across something that's like this. So this actually wraps up the Lead Code Beginner's Guide. The next video will actually be me wrapping up the official explore card, going through these next sections and talking to you all about what I think to do. But I had a lot of fun with this. Stay tuned because there are going to be more playlists around explore cards. I'll figure out a good one to proceed to next. There's a plethora of them and we'll definitely try and get to all of them. If you like this sort of content, make sure to subscribe to this channel. I do live streams, I do front end work, I do weekly roundups. And I recently started a podcast of which I will be making a video of shortly. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure to stick around, leave some comments, let me know about your lead code progress. I'm very excited to communicate with all of you. And with that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your day and happy coding.